One of the first gasoline powered machines I ever bought that was new was a Troy built pressure washer and I got it from my local hardware store. I used it here and there for a few years but I ended up selling it to yet another one of my coworkers years ago. So the one you see on the screen is not the same one. But in that time I figured out a few things about having one of these. Now would I recommend someone having one of these? Well I think you're going to be surprised by my answer. In today's video, we're going to look at this Troy Build pressure washer with a Honda engine. Now this one I found for free by using a website where people just give away items just like this one. Now I've already made a video about this pressure washer and if you want to see that video, there should be a link to it at the top of the screen or at the end of the video. And I'm just going to use the video as a background while I talk about why I'm recommending that not everyone needs to buy one of these. But what if you need to use one of these? What then? Well, that's pretty easy. I would recommend that you either borrow one from someone you know who has one, and if you don't know anyone with one, go out and rent one. But why? Wouldn't it make more money sense to buy one and have it for good than rent one several times? Well, let me explain my reasoning. So when I got my first home was when I started considering getting one of these because I now had a front and back porch to worry about along with a driveway to try to keep clean. As far as I was concerned, getting a pressure washer was going to do the job, but not realizing that a surface washer attachment would have been a good idea as well, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I did some light research that was mainly based on budget and then went to my local hardware store and picked one up, but man was I in for a headache. So when I first got it out of the box, I thought I was going to turn it on and start spraying away all the gross things that I didn't want anymore, but I was wrong. The first thing that I would always recommend doing is to look at the owner's manual to make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into. Of course, it's a gasoline powered piece of equipment, so we had all the regular warnings, but there were a few extra ones that I wasn't prepared for. The first issue that I didn't know about was the chance to be electrocuted. The reason is pretty simple. You could be spraying in an area that might have electricity in it. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, think about an outdoor wall outlet or maybe some outdoor lighting. The next one that hits really close to home is the possibility of slipping on the water from the wand or tripping on the hoses. Now this was something I never really thought about, but it's something you need to be aware of before getting one of these. So let's say you're not concerned with any of the extra safety hazards. You're just ready to start spraying that driveway or that back deck with 2,500 to 4,000 PSI of water pressure. But this has to be one of the most underrated machines to do some serious damage to your eyes and your skin. Of course, a lawnmower poses a serious risk if you make contact with its spinning blade, but this is just water. How bad could it be? Well, one false move and you could end up with a very serious flesh wound and if not taken care of, could mean some serious medical issues in a very short time. The issue is that water from a pressure washer seems really harmless because we don't typically perceive water to be hazardous unless we drink too much of it or we drown in it. This time, however, you'll need to treat it with a fair amount of respect. So if you're not capable of doing that, you might want to outsource that cleaning to someone else. The next reason you should consider not getting one of these besides the risk of flaying yourself is the increased maintenance you have to provide for it. Now if you're not good at keeping a schedule then this may not be a good machine to have. Besides the normal engine maintenance, the pump needs to be taken care of as well. Otherwise the pump will fail and you will either need to rebuild it or replace it and man they aren't cheap. Now there's no real mystery to taking care of one of these but make sure you read and follow the owner's manual for your particular pressure washer because they aren't all the same. So aside from the extra maintenance and extra safety precautions you need to be aware of, what other reasons do I have about them that would make me reconsider them? Now depending upon the type of usage I would not recommend a gasoline powered one but instead I'd use a corded electric one. Pressure washers are kind of like hammers. They make all different types of ones for certain jobs and you might need a very specific type for your needs versus just getting the biggest one on the market. Now I'm sure everyone's seen a claw hammer before because you probably have one in your house right now, but you can still drive a nail into the wall using a ball peen hammer. You just won't be able to take it out with it. So how does this relate to a pressure washer? Well, if you're just needing something to spray off your porch, you don't need a 5,000 PSI unit when a much lower pressure unit will do just fine. And if you're willing to go down as low as 1,800 PSI, then you could have a corded electric one for one third the price. And that's for an entire kit consisting of a soap dispenser and even a small surface cleaner. And if you're only gonna use it a handful of times a year, getting an electric one makes monetary sense and is better suited for the job and with less fuss. Remember, I don't have an issue using electricity, I just don't care for the battery aspect. 
So for the price and ease of care, the electric options are way better. Now, if you make way more money than the average person, then buy whatever you want. But even you have to agree that it makes sense. But what if you need to do some serious cleaning? Easy, get the biggest and most powerful units you can afford. So yes, a pressure washer isn't for everyone, but if you need one of these, make sure you get one that fits your needs. Having said that, what reason would I have to get one of these? The answer is my house. Now after about one to two years, the back porch will start to get very dark in color. When I first moved in, I thought it was just the color of the concrete, but after getting the pressure washer, I was shocked to realize that it was just dirty. I then spent the next two hours cleaning it, and afterwards, I was simply amazed by the change, but what else do I need it for? Now, if you've been watching either of my channels for any amount of time, you'll realize that I do a fair bit of cleaning on the equipment I work on. Now, most times I'll just spray it down with a good degreaser and then hose it off. But then when it comes to the dirty jobs, it's probably best to use the pressure washer. But there's a huge problem. First off, the pressure washer is very loud. And the second reason is it uses a lot of water. I know that sounds like I'm being ultra critical, but my neighbors have had a lot more life experience than me, so I try to be somewhat considerate to them. What I mean by that is that I only break out the gasoline pressure washer when I really need it, otherwise I'll just clean it by hand. So when did I change my mind about using an electric pressure washer? Easy. I started using the lowest pressure one that I could find, which strangely enough was actually a repurposed paint sprayer. I had a friend who was having issues with a very expensive paint sprayer that was leaking at the pump. Unfortunately, they don't expect anyone to rebuild these pumps, so the only way to fix it was to replace the pump, but it was going to cost about half the price of a new one, so they opted not to fix it. I then asked if I could have it in return for doing work for them, fixing other gas equipment, which they agreed to, and I'm happy to say it, but it's been great for what I needed to do. Now the pressure from the paint sprayer was enough to get my equipment clean and it uses very little water. It's also somewhat quiet, although I have plans on making it even quieter. I know I've mentioned it before about using too much water, but you have to remember that I work in the grass and if it gets too muddy, I could make the ground unusable until it dries up again for me. So for me, it not using a lot of water is a huge plus. Now, even though I have this paint sprayer, I wouldn't mind getting a small pressure washer for those really tough jobs that the sprayer just can't handle. However, it's a rather low priority on my list, so I'm not trying too hard to find one. Besides, I have the gasoline ones, but like I said, I use them rather sparingly. If you saw the video on getting and using a chainsaw, then the pressure washer falls into the same category. It's nice to have, requires more maintenance than most people care to give, and when it starts having issues mainly because of the lack of maintenance, they'll put it on the curb for other people to take away and hopefully not throw it away in the garbage, which is what the manufacturers want you to do. That way you can go out and buy a new one. Now, if you're fine with using it for one year and then putting it on the curb the next year only to go and buy a new one, then be my guest because that means someone like me will come by, pick it up and try to fix it. Hopefully, the pump is still good and not damaged from freezing over the winter. Then we'll either use it or sell it off for a pretty good profit. I will say that if you intend on using one of these, you should definitely consider wearing safety glasses. Now, it's not the water you have to be worried about, but whatever the water is hitting, such as the dirt, debris, or anything that might come loose from what you're spraying at. I would also recommend that you wear some form of hearing protection because, for some reason, even though the engine might be smaller than a lawnmower's, it seems to be a lot louder. It's not needed, but after using one for an hour or so, your hearing will be a bit strained afterwards. Now on the electric ones, you don't have to worry too much about the noise. It's not whisper quiet of course, but I find the sound the pump makes to be rather annoying. So if I do get one of these, I'm going to be sure to try to deaden the sound it makes. And if it doesn't work, I'll end up wearing my hearing protection only because the sound is not pleasing to listen to, especially if you have to use it for an hour or so. The other option to getting one of these is to of course borrow one or rent one. At about $45 a day for an industrial electric unit, it's worth it in my book. At least you don't have to worry about maintaining it and fixing it, plus you know it's going to work when you pick it up from the store. So what are my final thoughts about having one of these? Easy. If you plan on using one of these more than a handful of times a year, then buy one. If you're not sure that you need a gasoline or electric one, ask somebody at the store, and if not, ask someone who's owned one for a long time. And if you find out that after getting one of these and you really don't need it, give it away or sell it. 
Now these can be very enjoyable to use and very satisfying if you're like me, but there's nothing wrong with admitting that you made a mistake or a misjudgment and that you changed your mind, but I hate to say it, sometimes you just don't know until you get one and then come up with your own opinions about it. If you didn't know, all the pressure washers that I've ever had besides the first one have been found using a free website to find items being given away by generous people. I mostly find trimmers, mowers, and some blowers, but I do find some pressure washers as well. A lot of people don't buy them because they're not cheap, and those that do inevitably just give them away once they realize they never needed one in the first place. Now, if you want to try one of these out first before you make a decision to buy one, simply ask a trusting family member or someone gullible enough to lend out equipment and try it out for an hour or two. Just make sure you read the owner's manual first before you start it up, otherwise there's a good chance that'll be the last piece of equipment they'll lend to you. So my question is, would you ever decide to get a pressure washer for yourself? I guess I should have asked whether or not you even needed one, but that's something you'll need to figure out for yourself. As for me, I have several of them and enjoy using each and every one of them, at least the ones that don't have pump issues. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.